Salutations, respected viewers. I am George from Ireland. Here I am in Limerick, in front of the uh, Bishop's Palace, the Catholic Bishop's Palace, and that's a Patri uh, that's as I say, statue of Patrick Sarsfield, uh, who was a general in um, the Irish Army and the Jacobite Army. So, 1688, James II, King of Ireland, was overthrown in England. He was King of England and King of Scots too. He went initially to France, he was supported by Louis XIV, and then came here to Ireland. And Ireland having a Catholic majority, most of us threw our lot in with him. He was the rightful king after all. Um, more, moreover, as a Catholic, he said that uh, there would be equality for the Roman Catholic majority here, the Roman Catholic minority in uh, Great Britain as well. But uh, anyway, his son-in-law and nephew, William III, had ousted him. William III being both, both son and wife, nephew to this man. Yeah, William III had married his first cousin. Nice. Uh, no wonder they'd like to go to family reunions, royalty. Uh, anyhow, so um, Patrick Sarsfield was uh, from Dublin, and uh, the statue and the pedestal, I was impressed. They quite correctly call him the Earl of Lucan, because uh, some people here, I mean, my cousins, they, they got the idea he was in some way a nationalist. Now, he wasn't uh, asking for the uh, act of union. No one was for or against. It just wasn't being talked about in 1688. Um, but he certainly didn't want to break the connection with uh, England. Uh, the King of England was also the King of Ireland. That was unquestioned at the time. Anyway, um, so uh, he was going to fight for James II, our, our rightful king. That was the Battle of the Boyne. Now, uh, the Jacobites, as in James II's men, were defeated. James II then took ship for France. But the fight was by no means over. The fighting went on for over a year after that. Then the Battle of Offram, which was a heavy defeat for the Jacobites. It's in, um, it's in County Galway, we've got that right. And then Limerick was the only major Jacobite stronghold left, this being a walled city um, with a formidable castle. So uh, William III himself was not here, was sufficiently confident of victory. He'd returned to England by this stage, which is his main base of operations. His um, English, uh, Welsh, Dutch, Swedish, possibly Scots soldiers were hit there. Some, some French Huguenots, i.e. Protestants, who'd fled persecution in France had come here so um, a battle was joined and um, people were fleeing over Thoman Bridge and uh, um, Lord Lucan behind me ordered, the, ordered it to be the gates to be locked not to let the refugees in because if you let them in you're gonna let in the Williamite army too so many of them were put to the sword people jumped into the river and drowned at the Shannon um, anyway so he was commanding there and the siege was going not terribly well there was really no chance of relief now, if, uh, if the walls were breached, if they successfully undermined the walls, or the city was taken by storm, then they may well have put everyone to the sword, because these were very barbaric times, the 17th century, that's what had happened at Drogheda. However, if you surrendered beforehand, then quarter would be granted, and indeed, uh, there should be no looting either. There should be no violation of women, which was quite par for the course in those days. Having said that, when Cromwell's forces were in Ireland earlier, I'm not aware, I've not heard of any allegations in the 1650s they committed rape. I'm not saying that was on, I just don't know. I simply haven't heard the allegation. I know his men willfully killed civilians as if it was no accident. But as for rape, not heard that particular allegation. But anyway, um, everything, their, the, their, their um, provisions were running low and ammunition, all the rest of it. So he decided to negotiate and actually secured very, very generous terms, the Treaty of Limerick, that uh, there would be equality for the Catholic majority in Ireland. Uh, Lord, Lord Lucan and his men would be permitted to retire to France with colours flying, take their weapons with them, um, which they did. Now, um, pros and cons from William, my perspective. Ireland is an awful lot easier to control for William III if you know those who might be inclined to fight him have gone overseas. On the other hand, you've considerably strengthened the French army. But the French army is much stronger anyway, perhaps it wouldn't make that much of a difference. So part of the treaty was kept. Um, uh, Patrick Sarsfield and his men, their wives, their children, were permitted to um, sail to France, and they, their descendants have remained there ever since, uh, joining, um, the, the, joining the um, Irish Legion, the French army, was only finally wound up by Napoleon III. Um, so there was a considerable Irish expatriate community in France, which is why we have Patrice Magman, who was the, the, the president of France, so he was assassinated by Sadi Carnot. Um, and there's like um, French people with surnames like Barton, who are um, uh, unmistakably Irish. Uh, but they just largely, they just intermarried so much, they blended into the Irish community. I recall my parents going to an Irish society thing in, in, in Bordeaux. They're the only ones who could speak English. Nobody talked about speaking Irish there. 
Uh, what else about? There's also on, on Paris, uh, Rue des Irlandais, where the Irish College was, as in it was a, um, a seminary, but it was closed in the early 20th century. Now, now, now a cultural centre is not for training priests any longer. So what else about uh, this uh, Lord Lucan? The title was degraded and given to somebody else, uh, as in the Earl Lucan, the, the one who uh, notoriously later murdered his nan nanny Sandra Rivet in London in 1974. I can't remember uh, the blight's proper surname. I can't. It's Bingham. Uh, given to the Bingham family, an English family who had a slender connection with Ireland. Whereas Sarsfield, he was um, English through and through by his ancestors, as far as I can tell. But his, his, his family had been in Ireland for a few centuries. So there was this English community in Eastern Ireland, English speaking, largely English stock, uh, uh, but Catholic. And a lot of people don't seem to realize that. These people regarded themselves as English and were, were viewed as English by everybody else. But um, by the 18th century, they started calling themselves Irish. And likewise, the Protestant community in Ireland called themselves Irish too, but they wanted very much wanted to maintain a connection with Great Britain. So just because you're Catholic and lived in Ireland for a long time didn't automatically mean you were considered Irish by anyone, including yourself, in those days. Um, all right, so that was the end of uh, uh, Lord Lucan. Um, he joined the French army and they're fighting in northern France, what we now call Belgium, who's mortally wounded in uh, 1693. So that was the end of him. Some people think he was a fantastic uh, hero. He achieved some um, uh, deeds of daring, some, some military feats earlier in the Williamite Wars, which have been going on for about three years. So many people talk about James II as James the shit because he had left us in the lurch um, um, and, and the fight was not over. Had he stayed, it would have been a big fillip to our morale. We possibly could have prevailed in Ireland. I could use that for a springboard to get Great Britain back. But no, he threw in the towel too early. So no doubt it's, 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 it's hard by the um, cathedral, St. John's Cathedral, because he's honored by the Catholic majority here, because, well, till say the 19, 1990s, the majority, the Catholic majority here would have been huge, like 98%. And it's now lower, because around about 2000, the Protestant minority got the biggest boost since 1690, as in lots of immigrants from countries like Nigeria. And there were these tiny Church of Ireland congregations, a few old maids rattling around this a medieval church, and suddenly they're joined by zoot-suited Nigerians cartwheeling the aisles. So it really um, uh, mixed things up. And so we've got uh, quite a lot of immigration in Ireland, uh, Muslims here as well, Hindus and so on. We have Irish Indians, like our Tisha, and we have Turkish people, I've heard Turkish people spoken on the street today. We have Polish people, Romanians, Chinese people, and so so forth, people from all over. There's even a Turkmen restaurant in Limerick now. Well, that's enough about um, uh, Patrick Sarsfield, the Earl of Lucan. Um, I shall switch it off now. Right, cheery bye-bye.